Hello, this is Douglas Rumbaugh, and welcome to episode 5 of my Linux Back to Basics command line tutorial series. As I mentioned in the previous video on su and sudo, today I'm going to be explaining to you permissions and users. What I won't be explaining that I had mentioned I was is groups. I'm going to continue to mention groups because they pop up a lot but I think they deserve a video unto themselves so my next video or one of the next videos is definitely going to cover group management and so on and so forth. Another reason to segment it off is that for the average user it's not group management isn't something that's terribly important. There's only going to be two users on your computer anyway. Okay so let's get started. The first thing that I want to introduce is because we're going to start getting into syntactically much more complex commands it seems a good time to introduce you to man pages man standing of course for manual so up to now we've had at most two arguments and some options you know but easy to remember options uh, that you're going to use there are more options in those commands that you probably never will have a need for and this is how you find those out so to open up the manual page for a command you simply type in man and then the command. So the command, first command I'm going to show you today is user add. We'll open up the man page for that and you'll quickly see why man pages come in handy. There's a lot to remember here as far as potentially useful options on this command go. And this allows you to quickly look them up without having to turn to the internet or bother your friend or anything along those lines. Uh, if you've ever gone to a Linux forum or something for help and someone responded with, I believe it is RTFM, they're basically telling you read the man page in a not so kind way. Because the answer to your question is in the man pages. Uh, if you read the man page first, you'll probably save yourself a lot of trouble as far as the whole stereotypical aggressive Linux community is concerned, although I have yet to encounter that. In any event, enough on that little tangent. The first command I want to show you today is user add. So as I mentioned in the last video, if the only user on your computer right now is root, you're going to want to change that. And user add is how you do it. So I'm going to log into a root shell because user add is one of those commands that requires root permissions to run. Uh, as soon as I get my password right. Anyway, there we go. So the syntax that you're going to want, by most of the defaults are fine. So I'm only going to use two of the tags that are the option tags that are available in this command. The first one is m, lowercase m, which it tells it that it wants to, it tells the command to create a home directory for your user. And we'll also use g, which allows you to specify the default group and we're going to use users which is a standard group on your system. All your general purpose user accounts should probably be in the users group. And then you type in your username and press enter. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Not sure why I did that. There we go. So now if we were to go over here you'll see I have test user set up. But you're not done just yet because right now, for example, if I were to sue into test user, the password isn't configured, so it's not going to let me do that. You have to set the set the password for that user account now. And I keep, for whatever reason, today I just can't type passwords. There we go. In order to do that, you need the passwd command, followed by the username of the user you want to set the password for. And then you enter in the password for that user. In order to use password in this sense, you have to be root. However, you can also use password to change your own user password without root permissions. So you have to enter your current password, of course and then enter in your new one and it will change the password well in this case it didn't because I I don't want to change my password but if you entered a different password it would change it 
Uh, and we'll change it back. There we go. All right, so that's the password command. It's not much to that. You can also get rid of users using the user del command, user delete. And once again, you need root access to do this. So if you type in, you know, for, for variety's sake, just do it exactly like that, and it will delete the user. Okay, that's the bare minimum basics of user management. You'll probably never have to use any of that, but I felt like introducing it because we're going to next get into permissions and ownership. As I mentioned numerous times in the past, you can see the permissions of a file using this ls-l. The first three represent the owner of the file. So in this case, Douglas is the owner of the file. Douglas can read and write, but not execute this file. The next is any member of the users group, or the group that the owner belongs to. And those guys are allowed to read the file, but do nothing else. And the final one is everyone else on the system. So anyone who is neither Douglas nor in the users group can read this file. You can change the ownership of a file using the change own command, ch own. And this one has to be run as root, of course. So I'm going to use sudo ch own. Uh, why don't we change test.txt? Or no, I'm sorry, the syntax is the user that you want to change the ownership to, followed by the file name. There we go. So now if we were to run on ls-l again, you'll note it is now owned by root instead of Douglas. So let's just revert that change. CHO is fairly useful, but even more useful than that is this next one. Okay, so the way these commands are, R is read, W is write, E is execute. And you can set those for your own files using the change mod, chmod command. But before I get into this, I want to mention the way that the system is handling these permissions. On screen here it's displayed as R, W, and E, read, write, and execute, and you can use chmod with R, W, and E, but the easier way to do it requires a little bit of explanation. So these permissions are actually saved as an octal number. Uh, by octal, I mean the counting system, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and, or 0 through 7. And it only has those eight numbers. So when you get to eight, eight is 10. And then nine is 11, and 10 is 12, and so on. It's not terribly complicated, but you it takes some getting used to. The reason that it, this is uses octal is it has something to do with the uh, the way that the computer stores binary values, and I'm not going to get into that. It's way too complicated for this video. The permissions on a file are stored as three, a, a three-digit octal number, so. 000 has no permissions for anyone. Uh, this first number, or the first digit in the octal number represents your user's permissions. The second digit is the permissions of anyone in the group, and the third is the permissions of everyone else. So it's in the same order as it is here on the um, on the, the long list command. And each permission has a certain value associated with it. And those values are, I'll fire up Vi here just to, dem just to write it out for you. Read permission has a value of 4. Write has a value of 2. And execute has a value of 1. Now, 
the octal representation of your permission is the sum of the permissions that you have. So say using 000 as the default, you want your user to be able to read and write the file but not execute it. You would need 4 plus 2, read plus write, and then of course 00. In other words, 600 gives your user the permission to read and write to that file and no one else in the system can even look, can look at it, can read it, can write to it, or can execute it. If you want execute permissions, 4 plus 2 plus 1, so 700, and so on down the line. The cool thing about the way they have this set up is that each combination is distinct. There's no way you can add these together in any way that are let me think about how I want to word this. Um, each set of permissions, every single possible combination of these permissions has a different sum. So there's no ambiguity. Seven means all three, read and write is six, write and execute is three, read and execute is five, and so on. To give everyone, to give the um, the permission number for give, letting everyone do everything to the file is 777, of course. Read, write, execute for all three groups, or all three sets, the user, the group the user belongs to, and everyone else on the system. Um, it's not terribly complicated, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. Note that these number values here are in the man page for the change modulus, or not change modulus, change mod. I'm not sure what mod stands for. I don't think it's modulus, uh, but the change mod command. So you can look those up if you forget them. Now the syntax, oops, I always forget to do that. The syntax on the change mod command is you do chmod followed by the permissions followed by the file name. And actually, it's the user, or the owner, the group that the owner belongs to, and everyone else. So, if we were to just list out these files, uh, let's take this, I don't know, we'll use test.txt again. So I can change text test.txt so that everyone can do everything to it. And if we do an ls-l on test.txt, where to go? There it is. Um, color changed on me because I made it executable. You'll see read, write, and execute is populating all three sets. And we can change it back to the standard, which is 644. Four. No. 644 test.txt and once again you can see it's back to read write read and read okay so that is a basic introduction to permissions and whatnot uh, the user add command to recap adds users but by, by default you're probably going to want to use the dash m to create a home directory for that user and put them in the group users and then of course their username is the last bit of that command once you create that user you have to run password with the username and enter them a password keeping in mind that both of those commands must be executed as root in order to change the owner of a file you have to run change owner the new owner's username and then the file name as root and to change permissions on a file you use the change mod command with the permissions represented as a three digit octal number where the user the owners I keep saying user the owners permissions are the first digit then the group the owner belongs to followed by everyone else keeping in mind that the octal number is the sum of the permissions one for execute, two for write, and four for read.
also uh, note that for C the change mod command, you can change mod on your own files. But if you don't own the file, you have to run that command as root as well. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so if you have any questions, comments, feedback, as always, please leave them in the comment section below. I will do my best to get back to them. Uh, in the next episode, what am I going to talk about? I may as well do groups next. So the next episode will probably be group management. Uh... As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a nice day.